everybody, it's Lennon, and this will be my, I guess, official first Thoth video, maybe. I already did Why Not Thoth, so I guess technically that counts, even though I didn't really talk about the deck. <laughs> um, so, but I want to approach this Thoth series like approaching you guys like wild animals, like Okay, <laughs> don't try this at home. And uh, handy dandy. <laughs> um, today I wanna talk about movement, okay? And I'm only going to show a few cards, like five or six. And like I said, very slow. <laughs> and, and we will touch on symbolism and sacred geometry on down the line, but Today, I very much wanted to show how Crowley didn't just make his characters in this deck lifeless, okay? He very much added some sort of movement to them. They're pulling you in or drawing you out, and I thought that that was so ingenious of him and Lady Frida Harris because upon their correspondence, Okay, like when you read the letters that they wrote back and forth to one another, he's, uh, she's all the time asking him, okay, well, I could not understand what you meant for this card. And I don't really understand what you meant for this card. And I think that there were some letters lost in translation there. So, not lost in translation, lost in time, okay? So, he, we don't know if they ever got in touch between letter to letter where she would finally figure it out, but it does seem like she did. And some of these are, now there's movement in a lot more that I'm gonna show you, but again, real slow here, okay? And I want to say a quote by Alistair Crowley, and this is to Lady Frida Harris, and she's complaining, okay? Cause she is a painter, she's an artist, but she's, she's getting that fear, right? I, you know, I, I don't really draw faces that well. I don't really draw like actual people and forms that well. And he straight up says, okay, your feeling about no forms and faces is merely symptomatic of modern soul sickness. Oh. He's caustic, okay? He's like, he's like Sophia from the Golden Girls. Shady Pines, Ma. <laughs> I mean, he's so, he was so crass in that statement, but also kind of telling her she's ridiculous for having that fear. She's going to be good. It didn't matter if she was actually, like, no talent involved whatsoever with the face or with the form itself. He just wanted her to put it to paper, right? It was like, just put something down there. And if I don't like it, you can change it. But don't, the, the, the fear is not needed. Right, and I thought that that was great. I, and I thought of when I thought of Sophia from the Golden Girls, I was like, uh, yeah. So, and if that didn't make him the wickedest man on earth, <laughs> um, and I think by saying the fact that he didn't just put statues in here again, like in my Why Not Thoth deck, I think he was being tongue in cheek because he knew that the other deck creators, okay, so think of the Marseille. Or, or even Rider weight, And especially, like, if, if you... Debt creation was very much a initiatory act into the Golden Dawn, okay? So, if you think that... So, we have Arthur Waite and Pamela, Col Pamela Coleman-Smith, and then we have Lady, Lady Frida Harris and Crowley. You think... These people, it's like a science, you know, this is like lab class. You, you partner up and you've got this project and whoever's best deck is, what, going to get published? Because this one wasn't even published until after they, de they were dead. So I thought, these people are pairing up randoms, okay, at like science class or English class where you have to pair up for a project. And I think that that's what, I think a little bit, that's, I think that's what happened. But I, I do think that even with her having the fear and having the, well, I might not convey what you just said to a T, but I can, you know, 
And he's just like, just whatever, just try, okay? I'm sick of, I'm sick of fooling with this. <laughs> and I love that about this deck. I love the movement, like the frequency, okay? I feel like I'm on the same frequency, you know, when you're using walkie-talkies. And if you're not careful, you plug into like a random CB radio somewhere. I feel like I'm on his same frequency when I read with the deck. And I often use it for scrying or meditating. I just like stare and it'll just transform in front of my face, okay? So we're gonna turn the camera, okay? And we're gonna look at a few cards. And I just want to show you some of my opinions about the movement. And I don't know, we'll see where it goes. But I think if you could see what I see on the surface, and we're talking surface here, okay? We're gonna barely scratch the surface of the actual meanings or anything. But I wanna touch base on the frequency I'm on and the movement, he, you know, that she, as the painter, I guess, uh, you could say, c is c trying to convey, okay? And I, I hope it's informative and I hope it's fun. Okay, we'll see y'all. Okay, we are back and I want to look at eh, a few a few cards. Um, we're, like I said before, we're only going to be talking about movement here and my views on what's going on in the cards. So let's get started. And we have a few major arcana and we have a minor arcana and we have a court card. So, uh, so he is dawning from space. Okay, this is the fool. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch going on in the movement of this card. Look at his feet. They are, they're pointing, right? So he's like kind of, he's like floating almost. Well, it says he's dawning from space. So he's, I think the way that the Book of Thoth stated this was that he is the ovum, right? So it's fertilized and it will eventually become a human, okay? But in its very primitive state, it is neither male or female. So I think that that was what he was getting at when he's talking about this card. And he does say that the sun right here is the, that's, that's the card. So... So if you look at the, and there's all kinds of symbolism in here, which we'll get to, but if his feet like coming back, he's not touching the ground, right? So maybe that's because he's not of this world. He's, he's of space. So there's no reason for him to be on the ground because he's not here. And Crowley, again, he says that it's the Kabbalistic zero. So it's the initial and final balance of the opposites. Again, I've said before about the importance of opposites in another video. And therefore, quintessentially a vacuum, he says, because of that. Because it's the opposite. So if he is both, okay, in and of itself a hermaphrodite, and then the du duality of the universe itself, then he's a vacuum. Now, he looks like a vacuum, okay? He's, he's well, if he's not jumping out at me, I'm getting sucked in. And I think that that's the nature of this card is he, Crowley wants us to get pulled in right here in this, well, maybe he wants us to get pulled into the sun. <laughs> and there is so much movement with this. Um, like I said, we'll go over all of the, like the grape stem and the, the flaming pine cone makes me think of Gandalf um, in later videos. But I believe that the point of this is the vacuum aspect of it. So if we're getting sucked in, it's like as the initiate, and as I said in the Why Not Thoth video, we have to decide where we're going to get pulled in at. Are we getting pulled at this caduceus? Are we getting pulled at the dove of Venus? Are we getting pulled in by the tiger? I mean, what's drawing us in? What is vacuuming us in? And I think that's the point. Moving right along. Okay, so this is the star. She's a nymph, okay? She is just... She's so appealing. All right. Now this figure figure is a manifestation. That sounds fascinating. Okay. She's, she is this entity in a fairy story. Okay. That you see, and it's kind of Fantasia-esque if you think about it. She 
like you're looking at the ground off in the distance and then all of a sudden you see this will-o'-wisp appear out of nowhere okay like a fairy and that's how I thought of that when I was reading the book of Thoth with this and it's she's nothing but then she's twinkling so it's like again another quote she's just drawing me in like the movement in this card is drawing me in and she's serenading me with her siren song okay now this magical pink water okay this magical pink water is flowing down over her face now it's pink because it's milk oil and blood so the life liquids okay and it's pouring over her face signifying the continuous power of all three that's in it within her now down here she's pouring it back into the water and half in water and half on land signifying that she's giving land she's well she's giving life to the land and then she's giving some back like to the eternity now he uses a lot of circles in this deck and I think that that's now Plato says that there's no circles in nature okay no perfect circles and so Crowley states well in a in a in a weird way he states that circles are a divine celestial and I think that that's what this is like this is her okay this is the star but this ball of gas okay and she has manifested right out of there like I said almost fairy-esque and then there's spirals out here okay signifying the turning of the universe so there's a lot happening in this card but if you imagine for a second that all this is in movement okay and it's turning like this okay she's twisting out of the ground and manifesting this if you could imagine is like that fountain like a circle right this is a sphere fountain and there's a little dot where the water comes out but it constantly looks like the sphere is moving and I believe that that's what he kind of wanted to convey here and even with the spiral in space I, I believe that it's the turning of the earth the turning of the universe okay that he's trying to signify and it's just there's a lot of great movement in this I mean let's just get a close-up here look at that pink water <laughs> okay now the chariot he's moving in the circle right in the background and it seems to be rotating out towards you uh think of the Looney Tune circles okay like that continuous tunnel looking thing and I kind of look at these four sphinxes that are supposed to be pulling him, but they're not in motion, right? So these z zodiacal sphinxes, okay, because this is the four, right? The four major zodiac signs present in like the Wheel of Fortune card. And they're not in motion. They're statues, okay? Now, he doesn't like to use statues. He likes to use movement. But he wants to signify that they're there, but that he is the one that's in motion and he's the most important thing here this is this is the holy grail okay and he's all covered up he doesn't he's so ethereal you're not supposed to know what he looks like in human form if there is even one in there okay and so he looks like he's coming right at you okay and I love that it does look so very much in motion again we're talking Looney Tunes tunnel here um Now, <clears throat> I look at this card, okay, as the swiftness of sunrise, okay? Now, if he is bearing the ten stars of Asaya right here, given to him by his mother the night, okay, then it's like the first morning light and how fast that comes and then all of a sudden it is morning. So it's like the swiftness of the sunrise itself, and I believe that Lady, Lady Frida Harris just really put forth that. Now, interesting, okay, and we'll touch base on more, like I said, more symbolism. But at the top of this card, if you can see, at the top of this card, it says Abracadabra. Okay, now this is our court card, okay? Prince of Cups. Actually, the minor arcana is a cup, too. That's, 
That's pretty weird that my mind went there. Okay, so he looks like this creature in the movie Avatar, okay? They're sitting on the back of their dragons and they're just riding through the air. And Crowley in the Book of Thoth says that this is the airy part of water. So if you think of, if you think what the airy part of water would be, okay, well, then that would be steam, right? Or that would be steam or fog. Okay, that's, that's like what his wings are made out of. These wing-like things at the back of him. Well, he might be moving so fast that this is like a, a jet trail, okay? And that's kind of how I see it because this eagle, it's flying down and it's drinking water, but it looks like it's very much in a scoop. Like it's coming down, it needs the water because they've been on a mission all day and they're just going to keep going. And I feel very... Like, this character is very ruthless, right? Now, the Book of Thoughts says that this the moral characteristics of this card is subtlety and secret violence. Okay, well, then you think immediately, right? You think of this, this moment in a film where there's a breath right before all the real action happens. And newspaper clippings and paper cups are flying out everywhere down the city street. And smoke and steam is billowing out of the sewer tunnels to the sewer drains. And, okay, so I think of him kind of like a mafia enforcer. He's ruthless. He's silent. He's got a whole bunch of skills. But upon first glance, people fear him, right? There's a fear there because they're like, wait a minute, I can't read your face. He's into fear, but it's just his countenance. I read too much. I read too many books. <laughs> okay. So, again, there's lots of movement in here, right? He is coming at you. He's not a statue. And he's a prince, right? So he was supposed to be, like, if we were looking at the rider weight, this would be light age. And that's very much a kid-like. But Crowley, he's not including any, okay, actual children, children, that, that idealistic type of a child essence he wants more of the you're already established in your craft okay this is your craft and you're already established you already know your gifts and you're using your gifts and then and then you go on down the line after that not, not he doesn't have a starting point like the rider weight deck does and i love that see his little his chariot is a shell oh i love that okay last card now, this is the Seven of Cups, okay? Now, he names it Debauch, which if we if we thought about that, like, I really want to cut my cards off. Um, but I know Lady Frida Harris put these borders on, and I think that when I meditate with the cards sometimes, like, if you're just kind of like he wanted this to be, this is like a, like, a, he wanted you to be able to scry with this. I kind of try to scry, like stare at it like one of those paintings for 30 seconds and then try to, your eyes map out different things, okay? And that's kind of what I do. And I love the movement in this. It just feels slow and it feels sluggish and it feels, this very much feels like slime, okay? I mean, this is poisonous and he does call this bottom part right here a morass, which is the bog of eternal stench, right? 10 points if you get that reference. <laughs> and it very much means that it's like a weakness from a lack of balance in your life, okay? So if you if you are a if you have a lot of debauchery in your life, but then you have no passiveness, okay? Quietness, and in that lack of balance, it's like too much too soon. And when one doesn't balance one's life and then reconnect, then the waters become poisonous, right? down here the waters become poisonous and then literally you have gotten you filled this cup up okay now these are two triangles so you filled all these cups up and then you filled these cups up and then finally you filled all this cup up this major cup of life right here and it's spilling out onto the all of this so there's a lot of stuff happening in this card and when you scry you can almost see it moving and then this water is like molasses Okay, this, this bog, swamp thing. So, all I wanted to say for this video, I hope that this was informative and I hope it was fun. And 
like I said, we're going to move right on slow with this Thoth series, okay? So, hope everybody has a good day.